Hello. Let me show you something funny. This is primarily aimed at young people. I, I, I think they're going to find it unbelievable, given the technology we have today. Somewhere around 19, let's say 74, 1974, I think it'd be about right. Our calculus professor would uh, write on a board at the end of the class, maybe four or five of the problems. Uh, this would be an example. And they were due the next time classes met. And I think they met three times a week. So you had a day in between. So he would write something like this. Given f of x equals this function, find the extremum, if any, and show their local the minimums or maximums. Show necessary steps and graphs. Okay? So we go back to our little rooms. And the first thing I would do is make a little table like this. So I would say, if x is minus 5, then what is f of x? Now, if you were lucky, which I was not, you had a calculator. The calculators did exist back then, but they were very expensive. I specifically remember an HP calculator was like $300, and there's no way I could afford that. So I did this by hand, kids. I'd put in a negative 5 and cube it, negative 5 squared, et cetera. Okay, so I did, I would make a table going down in X. <clears throat> so I'd go for like from negative five to five. And we had graph the paper, which I'm, they probably didn't even make that anymore. And I would plot those points on a graph paper like this. And I'd say, oh, look, this is going up here. This thing's going up. Look at that. Might be the maximum. I don't know, but it definitely turns around, right? It's coming back down. Goes through zero zero because we know that that point. It's going here. Look at this. These are on right next to each other. That means it's down here somewhere, right? It's going to turn around, and go back up. So, wow, that's great. Okay, so how do you find the extremums? Well, here's our original the the function he would give us. You take the first derivative and you set it equal to zero. So you're going to find out where. This, the first derivative goes to zero. That's the, at x, where does the, the, the first derivative go to zero? So then you solve this quadratic equation. So you use the, the quadratic equation, the formula, which is going to have two solutions, right? Because this is x squared. And this is a, b, and c in your equations. You plug all this in. You solve it by hand because I didn't have a calculator and you get a point and you say oh this is great now you take that point and you go back up to your original equation here you plug that in and you solve for uh, there's x1 x2 so you, you plug in x1 like this you solve it and you get f of x1 so now you got a point so you go back up to your graph and you say oh so it's one, so that's one and that's two, so it's one and a half. And it was like nine something, so it'd be five, ten. Here's nine, so it's right in here. So it turns around right there. You do that for the other point and find out where it turns around. <laughs> Are you believing this? This is a true story. Okay, so you got two points now. So now what do you do? How, how do you show these are... Uh, the minimums or maximums. Well, you can tell by looking at the graph which one is which, but you can't just, you, you can't tell him that. You have to show it. So what you do is you take the second derivative. Here's my, the, the first derivative. You take the second derivative. You, you plug in those points you found for x1, and you see that you get a positive number. So that is a local minimum. When the second derivative is positive, that's a local minimum. When the second derivative is negative, that's a local maximum. And you can tell that because what you're actually doing is you're plotting that, that second derivative, which is a straight line, and you're plotting a point from this extremum to that straight line, which is showing an increase in a positive direction. The same thing here down to this line, which would be a little negative, okay? And now we have things like this. Oh my, Desmos. 
So I write down my the function and I plot it. Boom, look at that. Isn't that great? Now, if you take the derivative in Desmos, it won't it won't show you the equation. This is just a comment I put here. Uh, I'm, it will take the derivatives, but it won't show you what the function is. But I see here I've got A, B, and C, so I write those down. Then I go down here and I write the equation for the two, the solutions, using the quadratic equation. And you see they got the same number with lots of significant the figures. So I take that x1, put it back into the original equation, and I find y1. All right, so there's my extremum right there. Okay, I take x2, and I put it back in and find y2. And there's that extremum right there. Okay, and here I've made my second derivative, which is this. I put x1 back into that, and I find this, which is a... A positive number and you can see it's here I'm going to there's there's the second derivative so that's what I was saying so this point goes up to here and you can see that it's a positive increase I do the same thing for the next one it's a negative and I plot that and it's on that line but uh, but it's decreasing so that is a minimum and a maximum and that's how easy it is to do nowadays. Uh, I know you hear your parents say things like, I had to walk both uphill and downhill on the way to school or blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, this this is a gold mine. And it's free. This is free. I can't believe it. I just love this. So who's better off? The schmuck like me that had to do everything by hand or this? I don't know. Because I spent so much time doing everything manually. Could I have been learning more things? Or if you have all this power at your fingertips now, are you not learning the subtle details of what this stuff means? I don't know the answer to, to that. So I want to know what you think.